Hello, my beautiful lovelies. Hi, it's Emmy. Welcome back to another recipe attempt. Today, I'm going to be tackling the much requested Japanese jiggly cheesecake. <laughs> So at this point, this recipe has been attempted by everyone. Corinne's done it, BuzzFeed's done it, and lots of other people have done it. It is the infamous Japanese jiggly cheesecake. If you don't know what that cheesecake is, it's kind of a loose interpretation of cheesecake. It is very Japanese in the sense that it's a chiffon or kind of foam style cake. This is going to be fluffy and tall and hopefully very, very jiggly. <laughs> Thankfully, I'm in the position where this recipe has been tested by many, many people, so I've watched many videos and read many recipes. I'm going to base mine off the BuzzFeed video where they attempt it five different times to get the ultimate DIY jiggly cheesecakes. I have to say that I was a little bit perturbed by that video because it didn't actually include starkly what the recipe amounts were because the amounts evolved as the recipe changed. So thankfully, a viewer in the comments put down what they postulized the amounts were based on some investigating they did. So I'm going to be using those measurements in today's recipe. All right, let's go ahead and get started. This recipe is quite involved. And big thanks to all of y'all who <laughs> requested this video. So in our saucepan, we're going to add some, let me get my thingy. Highly technically term, I need my spatula. On medium low heat, we're going to melt our cream cheese. And I shall put a link to all the recipe amounts down in the description. So cream cheese, butter. Already sounding good. Make sure you get every little bit in there. This was carefully measured. And whole milk. To facilitate this melting, I'm gonna cut my butter and cream cheese up a bit. I probably should have done that before I added it to the pot, but yeah. Now we don't want to heat this up too much. I've actually seen some people do this over a double boiler, but I'm just going to be risky and daring and do it on medium low heat, low heat, melt this all together. I actually had my butter and cream cheese sitting out for a little while too on the counter, so it wouldn't be so solid. Okay, so this takes a little bit of encouragement. Make sure you have this on very low heat and you wanna make sure all of that cream cheese is well melted into there. Okay, that's done. Now we're gonna set this aside. And now we're going to separate our eggs, a lot of eggs, 13 eggs in fact. Take the egg, crack it. I should also mention that these eggs are not cold. I've taken them out of the fridge to let them warm up a little bit. I've heard that establishes a better meringue. Let's see. This is my very technical way of separating eggs. I just use my impeccably clean hands. Crack the egg, gently lift the yolk. And this way I find I reduce the chances of breaking the yolk because we don't want any yolk in our meringue because then it'll keep it from fluffing up. So there we go. We're gonna save six of these yolks for the recipe. The rest we can use to make ice cream. You don't really have to worry about breaking your yolks with this method because you're using your hands and you're being gentle. <laughs> 13 egg whites. Now let me go wash my hands. So let's go ahead and get our pan ready. We have to line it with parchment. And because I'm using a springform pan, I'm going to have to wrap the bottom with foil to prevent any leakage. The reason why I'm using this kind of pan is that it has nice, tall, straight walls. And that's what we want for the shape of this cake. First, let's resolve the problem of lining the bottom. We want a perfect circle and we will fold it like we're going to make a snowflake in half. again, half again, and we're going to say that is the middle about there. Take this, snip that, okay, there we have it, our perfect circle. To 
line this pan. We're going to use a little bit of cooking spray to help stick everything. Bah. Right, there we go. Our lined pan. Next, we're going to make the meringue. We're going to use a stand mixer. Pretty large volume of eggs, so we want a big machine. So pour our 13 egg whites into our bowl. So to help with the stability of our foamy peaks, we're gonna add a little bit of cream tartar to the egg whites and then mix this on high for two minutes and then we're gonna gradually add the sugar. So if you have a stand mixer, that actually beats up pretty quickly. I would say that would take about five to seven minutes. And when it's ready, you should be able to dump it over your head. Now we're going to take our cream cheese mixture here and we're gonna add it to our eggs. We're gonna whisk that together because we allow that to cool off. It's not gonna coddle our egg yolks. So whisk that really well. And now we're going to sift in our flour and now the cornstarch. Whisk that in. I want to mix this up really well because it's it's cream cheese and eggs. Okay. One teaspoon of vanilla. Sprinkle raisins. We're not doing raisins. Let me get some hot water on the boil here. So you remember when I said I was all done with this? I wasn't because I forgot to add the foil to the bottom. That would have been a disaster. One direction. Two directions. Three directions. That should do it. Now, we'll put our ring back in. Ring, ring, ring of fire. Bah. Excuse me, I haven't eaten anything. I don't know why I'm burping. Now, we're going to combine our meringue into our flour and egg mixture. This bowl's gonna be a little small. <laughs> All right. There's a third of it. Under, flip over, under, flip over, under, flip over. Under, cut down, flip over. Be better if I had a wider spatula, but this is the only spatula I have, so. All right, so there's still some swirls of meringue in there. That's okay. Add a little bit more. Oh, this is very full. Now since this bowl is way too small, I'm gonna put this back into here. This is looking beautiful. Now we're gonna place the batter into the mold. Oh, that's beautiful. That's looking like a big cheesecake. That beeping is my hot water for my bain-marie, my water bath here. That's supposed to keep it from cracking, hopefully. So we're going to give it a couple swift taps, get it settled in there. Now we're going to use a bigger pan, place this in this pan. Add some hot water to fill the half the side of the pan. All right, go back in the oven, have a good time. So that's gonna bake for 25 minutes at 320 degrees. We're going to reduce the temperature down to 280 and cook it for another 55 minutes. All right, see you later. Hopefully this works. That's a big tall cake. Looking good though. Six more minutes. 
All right, the moment we have all been waiting for, the unveiling of a jiggly cake. So it's cooked, they're just beeping right now. I'm gonna grab this out of the oven. I had to extend the cooking time an additional 30 minutes because this thing is a monster. Okay, be right back. Da, 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 da. Make sure you can see this. Yes, there it is. Here is my beautiful cake. I am so excited about this. It looks beautiful. It's risen like mad. And now let's get it out of the pan. It smells a lot like uh, fortune cookies. Take this foil off. Oh, that's hot, that's hot, that's hot. All right, this is a spring form pan, so we're going to unlock the spring. And lift this off. Oh my gosh, look at how beautiful this is. <laughs> it's so hot. So now we're gonna do the whole Peely Peely reveal. Ooh. Oh my gosh, it's so gorgeous. You ready to see it jiggle? Look at that. I could watch you jiggle all day. I did have some cracking on this side, so it's not exactly perfect but we'll just look at this side. All right, here's the beautiful jiggly cake. Now let's dust it with some powdered sugar. Bah! Oops, too much powdered sugar. There we go. Yes, snowing. So I've read a couple of accounts. Some people eat this warm. I've read it on a blog that you're supposed to allow it to cool completely for it to taste better at least four hours. So I'm going to taste it now while it's warm and then I'm gonna cool it and then I'll report down below how it is cooled off. All right, that's so gorgeous. You are gorgeous. Yeah, I'm so happy about this, yay! <laughs> After all the effort I went into to put it together, I'm so happy that it turned out. And big thanks to everybody who tried this recipe before me so I could have success. I don't wanna cut it, it's so beautiful, but here we go, cut we must. So it's been out of the oven now for at least 10 to 12 minutes and it hasn't collapsed, which I'm stoked about. As I mentioned before, I had to add an additional half an hour of cooking to this to make sure it was completely cooked. Oh yes. Do you see that? Ooh, steam and warm. <sighs> Foamy, cooked all the way through. No layer of uncookedness, that's beautiful. Itadakimasu. Mmm. That's delicious. Mmm. Warm, fluffy, kind of custardy. Definitely has a pronounced eggy flavor. Sweet without being overly sweet. And it has a good cream cheese flavor in there too, but not overly heavy. Not at all like a New York style cream cheese at all. This is much more like a chiffon or an angel food cake. Fluffy, light, airy, foamy. Mm, delicious. Better than angel food cake though. Mm -hmm. To me this has much more richness and flavor than an angel food cake. I think this would be amazing with ice cream, fresh fruit. Yum. Love it. Okay, so I'm going to let this cool completely at least four hours in the refrigerator and then I'll taste it again. Hey everybody, so it's been about six hours since I made this beautiful cake. And look, we've already eaten this much of it. <laughs> so it's completely cooled. It did settle a little bit, but it's still pretty high. When it comes out of the oven is the best time for the jiggle action. Right now, it doesn't really jiggle. Let's cut that. That's what the crumb looks like. Isn't it beautiful? Nice and uniform. Very, oh. Mmm. Mm -hmm. That is so good. This is a delicious recipe. Absolutely delectable, scrumptious, fantastic. And in fact, I like it better cold. It doesn't taste as eggy now that it's cooled off. 
Instead, you taste more of the butter and the sweetness, and it's just phenomenal. The texture is wonderful. It's moist, but doesn't feel greasy or taste greasy at all, and has a really nice, soft, spongy texture to it. Excellent and delicious cake. I highly recommend it if you have the patience to put it together. It does take some effort, surely. My biggest pointer is to make sure you have an oven thermometer. So go to the hardware store and buy yourself an inexpensive thermometer that you put inside of your oven. Use that to take the temperature of your oven. Don't trust the dial or the digital numbers that are on your display because oftentimes it is incorrect. Mine was totally off, so I used the thermometer that was inside of my oven to get the correct temperature. That, I think, is essential. If you bake this at the correct temperature, and if you use a skewer to make sure that it's done, you will have more chances of success. All right, good luck. So I finally realized what this tastes exactly like. It tastes like Sara Lee pound cake. Exactly, same buttery richness, exact same flavor on the money. This is lighter and fluffier, and of course it doesn't come frozen. You have to <laughs> put in a lot of effort. But that's what the jiggly cake tastes like. Sara Lee pound cake. Phenomenal. Bye right, bye. All right, thank you guys so much for requesting this video and finally making me do this video. I hope you guys enjoy that one. I hope you guys learned something. Share this video with your friends. Be sure to follow me on social media so you can actually see me make some of these videos. And I shall see you in my next one. Toodaloo. Take care. Bye. Mm -hmm.